What's up everyone? I recently came across a video from someone named Theo where they talk about not writing unit tests. I haven't watched the video yet, but I figured it would be a good opportunity just to check it out, see what it's all about, because I'm a huge fan of writing unit tests, so maybe there's something I'm missing, but- Let's talk about unit tests and why I don't use them. I know that's a bold statement. So I don't know why I would say it's a bold statement. I don't know. It might just be my experience, but a lot of people don't write unit tests until they realize kind of the value of them. Pretty much every company I've went to work for, I've had to teach people how to write unit tests. So maybe it's a bold statement. I don't have much a use case for unit tests in the vast, vast majority of the things that I built. I'm curious to see what that actually looks like in practice. But, but this is actually the same take that, funny enough, some other big companies have. One of my favorites, and I need to go find the tweet quick. Somebody went on a rant about like eng culture coming from one company to another, and a Facebook engineer had a test that was preventing a change from happening. So he deleted the test and got back to work because tests are only there to block engineers. That is the only role of tests. So I wouldn't say that that is the only role of tests. They do block engineers, but they block engineers from pushing out buggy code that's going to make their lives more difficult. I also don't know that I would use Facebook or Meta as a shining example of why you shouldn't write unit tests. Metaverse has a lot of bugs in it. It's not doing so well, so um, maybe they should write tests? Unit tests are designed to slow you down. I would not say that they're designed to slow you down. If you do them properly, they actually speed you up because if you only write tests that make the code pass, you only write that amount of code. You're not actually gonna like over-engineer things. So they, they certainly can slow you down, but I wouldn't say that they only slow you down. They can actually speed things up if you do it correctly. Slowing your engineers down to make sure everything is always the exact way you expect can make sense. Like if you're doing like financial bank software to make sure transactions are being processed correctly on the back end, those types of things should probably have unit tests as well as a shitload of integration end to end tests. I would say they should have a lot of unit tests and a couple of end to end tests. Um, end to end tests are really expensive to write. So you want to be very selective of what you write for those, but anyway. That all said, you're building applications for users. The application breaking slightly and then being fixed when you've identified that break is almost always cheaper. As long as what you fix doesn't break other things though, that's a pretty big asterisk. And the nice thing with the unit tests, you find the bug, you write a test that reproduces the bug, and then before you can merge in that, that bug fix, the tests run and validate that you didn't break anything. So it kind of prevents you from fixing one bug and introducing 12 others. You cannot predict every path somebody might go down. So your unit tests are going to block important paths inherently just by existing. I don't think senior developers, engineer leads, team leads, all of the people who make these technical decisions, certainly not like CTOs and such, should be enforcing code coverage numbers for unit tests. I agree. Code coverage numbers for unit tests are complete garbage. If you write unit tests and you do it well, then you'll probably have a high amount of code coverage, but chasing a number isn't helpful. It just leads to writing garbage tests for the sake of code coverage, which isn't the point of, of writing tests. Like it's not to get a coverage number. If a path isn't put in the right place and somebody missteps and falls, you should be focused on building a good safety net. And I think that's the core of my testing philosophy. Don't build guardrails, build safety nets. Unit tests are safety nets, just to Throw that out there. Make it as cheap as possible to fail. So if something does go wrong in prod, you can revert it really quickly and fix it even quicker. Our time to respond to a bug at ping, like when somebody reports an issue to us, our average response time is a decent bit under seven minutes for a production fix because we have optimized the hell out of our pipe. What happens if a bug is identified at like 8 p.m. at night? Hopefully you're not fixing it at 8 p.m. at night. I mean, I guess you'd have to, but, uh, having a good amount of unit tests would probably prevent you from fixing those bugs because they wouldn't exist. But value of not unit testing is that the time you would spend unit testing can be spent doing all of the other things our teams, our users, and our engineers want and need. And by making our environment as fast as possible, it is now safer to make mistakes. But more importantly, our engineers are less scared. How are your engineers less scared though? Because what happens when you want to refactor something? What happens if you notice that like performance is not great 
and you want to play around a little bit, see if you can tweak things and make the code faster, how would your engineers not be scared of refactoring code that isn't covered by tests? Don't quite get that. Or when a test is failing for some reason, they don't worry about like deleting it and finding the right conditions. Well, if a test is failing, you don't delete it. You go off and you figure out why it's failing and then you ensure that the code doesn't make the test fail because if it's failing, it's a signal that something is broken. Um, assuming that the tests are actually good unit tests, which yes, there are a lot of unit tests that are not great. If a test is broken, it, it signals that something is broken and you should not you should not release that code. I've seen four person teams hiring DevOps because they have dug themselves into such deep holes instead of keeping things simple. And unit tests are one of those things where if they're not solving a specific problem for you, you probably shouldn't be writing them at all. Agree with that. If you don't know why you are writing the unit tests, then you probably should not be writing them because you are probably going to be writing garbage unit tests. Just write unit tests. <laughs> like I have plenty of videos on this channel that talk about how to unit test properly would recommend you try to do it the right way as opposed to just ignoring it. We've been keeping track at Ping actually. We have a list of the bugs that hit production that a unit test theoretically could have caught. And in our year of operation, we're at three. The point of unit tests is not to catch every single bug. The point of unit tests is to document how the code should work, what the behaviors are, and create those safety nets so that you can refactor the code easily. If you hit a bug in production, that's fine, that's going to happen. Unit tests are not to prevent bugs in production. But if you have unit tests, you can then write a test that replicates that bug that you found in production, see that it fails, update the code so that it then passes, run through all of your unit tests, see did this fix break anything else from the documented expected behavior? If everything's all green, cool, you're good to go, you can deploy it and you know that you fixed the bug on top of not breaking anything else. On top of that, a lot of the problems I used to have that unit tests helped for were things that TypeScript has solved. So, so a lot of the things that he's written unit tests for are things that a compiler would fix, like are things that a type safe language would fix. So I kind of get the feeling that this person hasn't written a lot of good unit tests, like good solid meaty ones that validate behavior allow you to refactor code. Like it seems like a lot of them were written around JavaScript maybe to validate that if you're passing in an array and you're doing some addition to that array or something stupid, making sure that that works. And yeah, like that's a complete waste of time. You have to do that if you're using a language that doesn't have strong typing. So yeah, TypeScript probably solves a lot of the things that you were unit testing for before, but you should still just test the behavior. And for the other 20%, I feel like you're gonna run into those bugs anyways. So making it easy to fix them when you do is way higher a priority. For yes, make it easy to fix the bugs when they crop up by having a suite of tests that are easy to add additional tests to when the issue crops up. <laughs> ah! Man, okay. So we have lots of unit tests making sure it doesn't break. Cool, I guess. Like if nobody ever wants to touch that and you've put those unit tests in to kind of like cement it in, in stone so that no one will ever touch it again. Great, you did your job. You took this thing that barely works and you t duct taped and cemented it in place so it can't ever move. So it's less likely to break. That is actually like what you want to do with code is to like, once you define the behavior, you don't want that behavior to change unless there are new requirements. And then if the behavior is supposed to change, you delete the tests that had that behavior encapsulated because that's no longer valid. And then you write tests that validate the behavior is the same. The more often that you're changing your code, the more often you're going to introduce bugs. So realistically, yes, like you want to write code that doesn't change very often because once it's tested, you know it's working. You'd be better served by like rewriting it and just swapping out dependencies to like use the new version of it as opposed to just rewriting it. Reinforcing it with unit tests to double or more the amount of code just to make sure that thing doesn't break again. It's time you could almost always have spent rewriting the thing so it's less fragile in the first place. What if you don't know how the thing works though? Like, what if you didn't write the code originally? What if this code is like two or three years old, the person who wrote it is long gone at this point in time and yeah, you can go off and rewrite it, but you're probably going to miss business edge cases that were encapsulated with it. Who knows if the product manager's still there. 
you're going to have to go and manually test it. So hopefully you have the original feature well documented. These things work really well if you have a small company. And I know in the beginning he was like, my take it's seen as some crazy rebellious person who only works on small teams and is more than happy to go break things for all five of my users. A lot of what he's saying really makes it feel like it's a pretty small company atmosphere. And yeah, you can deploy to a bunch of people, but that still doesn't change the fact that anyway, with all that said, I hope you understand why in the hierarchy of things I could be doing as an engineer, as a team lead, and as a CEO at any given time, unit tests don't even make the list. It does not bring value to our engineers, it does not bring value to our users, and it certainly does not bring value to our company. And you have to be in a very specific company's role for those things to matter a lot. Yeah, I completely disagree. Tests are very important. Like if you can't say and document how your code works, then you don't know how your code works. End of story. It might not be valuable to his engineers, but it should be valuable to his engineers. Like the engineers that have seen some things, the engineers that have been through it, know that writing unit tests, writing these automated tests that will validate your system works, they are really helpful to have in place as long as they're written well. If they're not written well, it's just like anything else in like software. If it's not done well, it's gonna be terrible. It's not unique to unit tests. So if you have one of those dumb 100% code coverage rules at work and some senior engineer from X Amazon or some shit that insists y'all need 100% code coverage, everything's gonna to go to hell, send them this video. Seriously, I would love to chat. Code coverage was a mistake. Not everyone that writes unit tests is obsessed with code coverage. That's. That's all I would say. This is a very weird straw man that he is building up. And unit tests solve specific problems that you probably do not have. Build safety nets, not guardrails. I hope this was helpful. So I would say, feel free, listen to Theo if you want to. I would highly recommend against that. Unit tests are just incredibly easy to write. Writing code does not take a lot of time. Coming up with the solutions and figuring out how to structure things that's usually what takes the most time. I personally don't worry too much about spending an extra 20 seconds writing out a test case and then validating that the code I'm writing works. But if you wanna save that amount of time, by all means, do it. If you're interested in learning more about unit testing and getting better at unit testing, I recommend checking out really either of these two videos um, up next. I made a couple videos about how to unit test properly so you won't regret the test that you wrote but anyway hope this was fun for someone uh that's it that's the video